described for the island groups extending from Bougainville in the south to New Ireland in the north. It is the largest town on New Britain. It has always figured prominently in the history of New Guinea. Before World War I, it was the headquarters of the German administration. It was the location of the Japanese South Pacific High Command during the Second World War and was the constant target of Allied aircraft. The town is joined by sealed roads to the rich agricultural districts. The discovery of large mineral deposits at Bougainville has added a new dimension to the economy of the area. Many residents still cling romantically to symbols of early history. The New Guinea Club was rebuilt from standing ruins. The club, the oldest in the territory, still retains a dignity belonging to a bygone era. Other signs of the past, now crumbling with age. All that remains of the former German administration. Only a little imagination is needed to hear the click of knee boots and the swish of silken gowns up the steps to the residency on the brink of Namanola Hill. The Spanish and Portuguese navigators who called New Guinea the Island of Gold named New Britain the Isla del Cielo, Island of Heaven. Riding across the smooth waters of Simpson Harbor or exploring the underwater wonders around the beehives contribute to making Rabaul a heavenly island. The resident volcanologist is stationed at Rabaul. Matapi is still active and a source of interest to visitors as well as to the volcanologist. Island of gold. Island of heaven. Many are the fascinations of Papua and New Guinea. Some came to find a fortune, others to help their fellow man.
it's at six o'clock. I think it's about the third of April today. We're in Rebel, standing down at Steamy's Corner, just panning around on Steamy's now. This used to be Steamy's Hardware or Automotive. I'm just trying to do this steady now and turn around. And up Camarary Street, there you go. Coming round again. Uh, Combio in the background. Might be a little bit dark, but we'll see how it turns out. Bella's got to start somewhere. Coming around, coming around onto it. This is where the supermarket used to be before it was cooked. Clark Supermarket, get a view there shortly. Coming around, looking straight down Mango Avenue now. Straight down Mango Avenue. There you go. There you go. Bella Motors. Doesn't bugger all of this place left, and that she collapsed in a great screaming heap. Coming around now onto the south daughter and back up the top of Mango Avenue now to the wheelie wheel on top. There you go. A bit further down Mango Avenue, down at Park Street now. There's Barley Corp coming around. There's the gift shop and all. Just the outer wall right there. The reef's all gone. She's all down on the ground. You can see the depth of the dirt here against the main door. Down towards the Nambus, coming round. There you go. House money belong to you, mate. PNG BC. Once again, it's, we've got a bit of roof left, and that's not a hell of a lot. Back up Mango Avenue, coming round. Well, there's all the. Uh, of the Barley Corp stores coming around now, going up towards the park. There you go, you see there ain't not a hell of a lot of anything left. This is only a wee small part of town. And there's nothing changed since I was here in January. It's all looks exactly the same. All exactly the same. Yeah, down towards the house picture. There you go. Yeah, the White House, the old tourist, tourist association office there. A better view of it. I have a play with the switch here. There you go. Coming round again. Not big on commentary as you gather. Never used one of these here. Only infernal devices before, so. I've got to think about what I'm doing. Coming round again. There you go. That's up. I think that's Gratage's office up there. They cleaned the roof off it. Just standing up behind Gratage's place, Park Street, coming around. That's generally where NGIP's place were, and coming around onto the Parkside Apartments. They're still standing all right. But you can see there, Japanese bunkers. A few of them are sitting out, and there you go. There's, that one there was the old Navy radio room, if I recall. That's still there, coming around. These were some of the, the old government type, or the Nissan hut storage houses that were behind. You can see there's damn all anything left. And that stinks, God, it stinks. There's something dead around here. And shoot, they were out shooting dogs last night, so I suppose that's what it is. There, back onto Thurston's offices there. There you go, that's one of those big Quonset huts. Have a look inside there, you can see. You can see how it doesn't take the weight of ash too much, eh? She's all bent and buggered. Look at that. And around there. This is the inside of the NGP, uh, NGIP wholesale outfit, down the corner. Yeah, you bugger. Still a few trees growing around. There's the Parkside Apartments just over the back there. It won't take long protracted scenes or anything. I mean, it's going to get all very monotonous very shortly. This is inside the NGIP offices out the front there. Their record keeping's got a bit sloppy, you can see that. 
imagine they'll get round to fixing it all up, carrying on. You can see there, it's just. This is a new church up on the corner of Park Street near the Queen, Queen Elizabeth Park. You can get an idea of the ash depth in this part of town here by the, um, the standard standard chain gate they got over, over there and coming around and up onto the QE2 Park. We might go for a bit of a wander up there and see if there's any football on and see if we can get a seat in the stand, but I think the seats might be a bit grubby, but we'll go and check it out anyway. Well, here we are up at QE2. I believe the game's been cancelled and there's the there's the stand. A bit grubbed up. Bloody roof's gone too. No good. Yeah, we got a garbage and that and I'll just turn around here in a minute. Okay, QE2. Coming around, I think that up the back there is the soccer field. Yeah. The soccer field up the back. coming around and the boys have put a big levee in down here. You can see this big bank, this levee. There's a drain to try and funnel the water from the hills to come down Park Street and out into the Nambus. Trees along, along the street here are starting to come away again. And Parkside Apartments as you can see there so you know where you are. I can hear Vern saying silly old sod, Parkview Apartments anyway. There's a slight adjustment here in the description. There you go, you can sort of get an idea on the ground floor what's going on. The roofs on both these buildings are still intact, they might do something with them but there's damn little activity. Back up towards the bong. Here you go. show you something here, eh? Hard to get bloody timber out of Kokopo. Look at this turnout. Eh? This is the same down the road at Steamships. I'll get some more film down there later on. But really, uh, you, you talk to people, you shake their bloody hands and look at you. You know, they... I don't know. Just coming up into Chinatown now. They won't be serving any more food for a while. Coming around, look at it. Bloody dreadful. Got a good one coming up here. I'll just march up the road a little bit. I'll give you a view of this this place first. See this big steel frame bird, building? I don't know what that is. That's new since I left, but we'll go up and have a shifty at it. Straight across the road there, that's Sing Yeps. It used to be Sing, Sing Yeps anyway. Coming back and up, there's this dirty great big steel building, eh? You probably already gathered that timber seems to be a little bit better in some instances, eh? Look at this. Hmm? Going around that back up generally up towards the bull. Panning around. Coming round on to Chin H Min Super Sound. Sounds for the nation. Yeah, there you go. Probably sounding a bit mumbly here and that it's early morning. I haven't woke up yet. I don't know what the, even what the light is like on this, I suppose, until we see it on the big screen, eh? Pansy printing. Here you go. Pansy printing just coming around onto the thing top of town. And looking over onto uh, on the Chin H men over there and then back down to what's left of steamships. Hardly a sound here, there's hardly even a bird chirping going on at the moment. House lap lap. Places were very badly looted, I believe, and imagine why too. Anyway, not much left there. 
There's where you used to put your photos in it, Chen H. Min, and the bench is still standing. There's not much anything else going up the back now where they had the watches and everything. There you go, up Market Street. Same as hardware. All down, the, all over the back, that's all down. That's really the front standing up. Coming down and the front stem is automotive on the corner. And we should be coming over in the background down towards Alamotors. There you go. Clark's chemist. Sort of. There you go. Post office just behind. We're going to have a look down there in a minute. Up on the landing on the alleyway besides Clark's Chemist. He's still in a pan down the post office. Not much anything left. See how the roof's all gone in. Brand new structure, eh? Nothing left. Top of Clark's Chemist across Demi's, the top pub, the Hummer must be on the back there. There's in the uh, post office yard up the side, a couple of houses there still sort of standing. Coming around the post office now at the back, sorting rooms at the back. Yeah, just doing a pan down the side now. Back out to the main street. There you go. Just off to one side of Vulcan here. Just going round now. This is the new top road now, they did a diversion. The other one uh, sort of washed out. There's the, there's the southern vent, little small one on the side of the hill here, you can just sort of see the edge of it. Traffic coming out from Rebel. Bloody road's very busy today. A lot of containers coming out to Cockle Park. Probably get covered in dust now. Yeah. Head off down to the village shortly. Uh, it rained like hell yesterday and I couldn't get a hell of a lot done. There's Mango Avenue, there's the post office just coming around now into Clark's. There's Clark's right there. Nothing left. This place was a river last night. You can sort of see here, there's been a few fresh field, uh, what do you call, tyre tracks and stuff, but you can see all the garbage been flowing down the main street and then sweeping off down the side. PNG News Agency, so just coming around the top now. Round on to Rebel Gift Shop and uh, I think that was the shoe store on the corner there. You can see the uh, 
Just get the garbage around the pole. I think there's a, there's a street sign there somewhere. Coming around, coming around, coming onto the PNGBC now. You see a couple of security guards. It's coming around now. There you go. It's the PNGBC. This is going to be a little beauty. Right behind me, there's a little thief. Now, I'll just go across. There's the old house picture. It's coming around there. It's the house picture. Looking up towards Banker and New Guinea Club. There you go. Just trying to get a bit there. PNG Motors. A bit shaky here. It's coming around down to. Um, just coming down to Hennessy's Bakery. There you go. Coming around. There you go. This little joke is just taken around, eh? Covered in shit. He's been crawling around inside thieving stuff out of broken motors, eh? Here you go, Ben. There's your office, mate. Right on the corner. There's the little gate going in the side down into the main compound. Coming back down onto the under the office now. There you go. Not a hell of a just panning round the front now and round onto the showroom. There you go. There. Not a hell of a lot to see. Another view from the office there, just from, that's where I was standing over there. You can see the car over there, just coming back now. Sign's still up, no one's home. It's coming around. I think that's your office, was the entrance to your office or the, the where the typists work, just in there. There you go. There you go, round again, typist room, there's the door to your office. And get a cup of tea here today. Computer uh, module there on the on the floor. A bit shaky here. Trying to work this bloody button on top. There we go. Just coming round again out to the front gate. There's the car. Yeah. Just looking down the backyard now. This is nearly right outside um, Mr. Gwen's office. Looking down into the back of Baroka Motors. There's nothing left. This is the corner of Court and Mango. It's coming around now. South Pacific Insurance on the corner. Hennessy's in the background coming around. Uh, Brian Bell's used to be Burns Felt. There you go. Down to the Nambus. Coming around now, Pacific Interiors. Pacific Interiors. This is looking on to um, Fire Station. Bugger all of that left. Coming around. Coming around on to the back of the RSL. RSL. Mango, Mango Avenue onto the RSL. Just doing a pan round now with Combiu. Hills in the background. Coming around. There's the library, I think in the background. Coming around now onto Augusta House on the corner. It used to be in New Guinea, I think, and you were here. Travel Lodge Mall. Electoral Commission. Travel Lodge. Coming around now is the Squash Court. And uh, Sunday afternoon, Ravel Yacht Club, she's full of life and everybody's right into it. There you go. See, they managed to save a few bits and pieces, and the boys have been telling me. 
the end of the name is. Self-explanatory. Gonna open it up next week. Probably more like a couple of months by the sounds of it. She's still standing. to Lands and Survey Department. You can see here the uh, levees they've built around the places to try and save what's left. Round across to the swimming club. Namanula, uh, sorry, uh, Kaibuna coming round. Namanula Road now, you can only get as far as the Jet Memorial. The road's gone, she's buggered. Coming around. Flanders Association. CPL compound. It's turning a pan now down, heading down towards um, uh, heading down towards Malay Town, looking in that general view now. self-explanatory here, you know where this place is. There she is, there's the nasty in the background, she's been quiet the last two days. Catholic Mission Office. Here's your front gate. Hey, Don. Here's uh, the front gate there. Looks like there's been a bit of water overnight. Just panning around the other side there. Looks like, oh my God, we'll have to go and see if the Bennets are home in a minute. It's coming around down here. There's a few trees starting to come away again. Anyway, there's a fat chance of anybody opening the gates here today, so we better go for a walk about. Well, no washing on the lawn. Ooh, jeez, I tell you what, there must have been a blue air last night. Look at this. At any rate, oh, I had a bit of a sing out before, but don't seem to Gwyn's a home. So I might have gone away for the weekend or something. to say anything there for a while. Here's the barbie. Thank you. 
Don't know whether you can see that. The bloody feral dog just jumped me, scared the living shit out of me. Looks like the Bennets are out too. They used to live here. steps and get a shot the bloody steps fell down as well. Just down round the back now. No point in keeping on with this. It's all the same. Here you go. Ron's old place. Just come around on the side of where we camped. Here you go. But you've seen the front. Here you go. Town library. Pretty well here stated. Managed to get most of the books out. Down onto the main drag. Rebel post office. It's probably the best it's been this week. It's been stinking hot over here. Just down on the road now, just coming, coming up onto Vulcan. Panning the harbour. This is the problem. See the rain coming up? I'm heading out to Kakapo to see, to see the, the, our people and I'm not, I'm half of a mind and what the hell to do now. I'll show you something else in a minute. Coming round the end of Vulcan, I'll do another pan in a minute. Vulcan. This is Vulcan now. We're going down towards Kokopo side now. This is the problem again. See this big heavy storm coming up at Kokopo. If that comes this way and comes along the ridge, I'm not going to get. I'm not going to be able to get back this way. And I'm not going to get back over the top. I can't. Buddy will check out of the pub now, and that because everybody's gone home Sunday afternoon. I had uh, after talking to Mum, I changed my mind, and then I thought it might be a damn good idea with the way the weather's been to go out to Kokopo and. Uh, go out and sleep in the palace and then get the plane out, but I don't know whether to go or come or go now. I might go a bit further and see how we get on. There's... I'm a bit shaky, I'm afraid. Can't help it. Getting old. Need a tripod, that's the guy. Yeah. Get a bit of a scale on the mountain as I pan across on the vehicles. Up onto Vulcan. You can see the quite Bit of 
smash overnight. But he's in the gardens there, dirty stuff, I tell you. Dirty. He's coming round the pub with his inside. Do you have a look up on them roofs there? They're black, they were white yesterday. <coughs> it's around the entrance there. I must go out the road and do a pan. This is the uh, printing office just down beside BP's. No, what am I talking about? Uh, Ella Motors. There's a compositor machine there. This is in back of Steaming's hardware. Still stuff on the racks.
our great grandfathers, great grandmothers, they talked a lot about an eruption. They told us that when you see these things happening, natural things happening, that is uh, an indication that there will be an eruption. So they said that when you see the sea receding and, and continues rumbling, quaking, you know the earthquake? During that time, there was also the sea weeds were uprooted and the sea receding right out to sea. Uh, the dogs here don't normally howl, but during that time, uh, before the eruption, the dogs were howling. The cats were, were you know, were, were uneasy. Even the chickens and, the, you know, all the animals were, were very frightened and they were, they were acting very peculiar. So those were the, the indications that we were told that when you see things happening like that, that is an indication that definitely there will be an eruption. We've done a lot of work on the um, geological, volcanological history of the area and it's very clear that the system has been in existence for a very long time, um, hundreds of thousands of years and so we built up a historical record, a prehistorical record. So we, we know that um, because of the history of the volcano that it will erupt again. So we have to prepare for the next eruption. The Rabal caldera, located on New Britain Island in Papua New Guinea, is one of the region's most active geohazard zones. It lies along the Pacific Ring of Fire, a network of active volcanoes which has helped shape our islands and yet pose the biggest threat to our existence. For centuries, traditional knowledge has been the main factor in saving lives of people living around active volcanoes. They were taught to read the signs and prepare for one of Mother Nature's greatest furies. In 1994, Mount Tavorvur erupted. It was 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, that was when hell broke out. It was totally dark, lightning was very, very low, and everybody was just, didn't know what to do. Uh, you had to just, uh, whatever you can find, just get under whatever you can find and just get yourself in there and, and stay in there. The Rabal Volcano Observatory, which has been keeping an eye on Mount Tavurvur since 1940, provided sufficient warnings of her imminent eruption. So we get the information uh, through the instrumentation that uh, we have uh, in Rabal uh, Caldera and uh, other volcanoes, uh, as I have uh, indicated. We get that information and we try to uh, analyze them. So by using that uh, information, uh, we sort of uh, make assessments uh, on the conditions uh, or the status of the volcano. So if we see that uh, there's activity, uh, you know, developing, and that may progress to an eruption, then uh, two things are happen. If the activity actually develops into a potential eruption, the Rabal Volcano Observatory activates its 24-7 uh, uh, watch uh, system. The Rabal Volcano Observatory, or ROV, also has to monitor several of PNG's active and dormant volcanoes every day. It was 24. And so currently it's uh, 22 uh, domain volcanoes. So our responsibility is to uh, monitor as many of the volcanoes as uh, possible, especially the active volcanoes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to our resources, we are able to monitor only uh, you know, select a uh, number of volcanoes. And that is uh, what we regard as uh, high risk uh, volcanoes. Uh, so that, you know, that class of uh, volcanoes uh, consists of uh, about six or eight uh, volcanoes. In efforts to increase the monitoring and surveillance capacity of the Port Moresby Geophysical Observatory, the Pacific Communities Building Resilience and Safety in the Pacific, or BSRP program, teamed up with the PNG Department of Mineral Policy and Geohazards Management to identify and prioritize their needs. Funded through the European Union, the BSRP team and geologists and seismologists requested specialized equipment. The equipment that has been given is a very sophisticated equipment that will be used to monitor the eruption of, uh, of volcanoes, not only for Rabal, but for all the whole of uh, PNG. So they have a set of equipments located in uh, Port Mosby at the 
uh, observatory in Port Mosby, and there's another set of equipment at Robal. The one at Robal is very critical because uh, taking into consideration the 1994 eruption and then another eruption in 2015 on Tavurvur uh, volcano. So uh, those are the equipments, and it it also are mobile uh, equipment that they take to respective uh, monitoring stations that they have, and they use that equipment for monitoring. The specialized equipment now allows the ROV to quickly mobilize and deploy teams when volcanic activities start to escalate. We don't uh, have mon uh, instruments on all our stations, on all our volcanoes, so the instruments, um, they help us to put or to respond to uh, volcanoes or activities of volcanoes that uh, don't have instruments on. So with uh, portable seismographs, uh, if there's activity on a volcano that do not have instruments, we deploy them and do field assessments and uh, continue to monitor the volcano and provide information back to the central observatory and to authorities that need the information to, to again, to do their own uh, decisions. The Port Moresby Geophysical Observatory is confident that with increased technological resources, they are placed in a better position to predict possible future eruptions. So the advantage these instruments give us is we are able to see what is happening inside the volcano before it uh, manifests on the, on the crater. So without these instruments, RVO wouldn't be able to see what's happening inside and then make that information available to the people. So again, uh, without these instruments, there might not be enough warning for the people to let them know that something is happening inside the volcano or might happen to the volcano. Yeah. So once it has erupted, when we deploy, um, we can try and track the activity of the volcano and then uh, say whether it's gonna continue or not. BSRP through funding support from the EU is also assisting in the development of new and innovative diploma level courses directly related to natural disaster risk management and geohazards monitoring and response. The University of Papua New Guinea through the geohazard uh, division, they have actually designed four modules, four modules on disaster risk uh, management that uh, is going to be implemented at the university. This is to uh, to train, to build capacity, you know, for the for the young generation now, because you know that um, on the there's a lot of staff staff turnover in terms of age. You know, the experience are now going away. So we need to build a capacity with a new set of um, of expertise through the students and through the the courses uh, or the modules offered by the University of PNG to train people so that uh, this is continued and uh, ensuring sustainability. And while these may be just small machines, for the government of PNG, it means building the resilience of their people to prepare and endure future disasters. Well, it's extremely important we should do that because they are the ones that get affected in the first instance. Help don't reach them very quickly in time. And the only way to, to help them, to look after themselves if they get affected or be able to see signs and move to safer grounds, they need those uh, support. The effort and, and focus now would be to build the capacity of our people out there at the you know, forefront in the rural areas. We, we need to build the capacity so that they can be able to look after themselves. And as the ROV keeps an eye on Mount Thavurvur, one thing is certain, she will erupt again. The belief that we have is that uh, we are in an area that is prone to volcanic eruption. So uh, definitely there will be another one uh, belonging to the other, the new generation that will come. We've had ours, they had theirs. So definitely, I certainly believe that there will be another one for the new generation. The volcanoes in Rabaul will certainly erupt again. We know that there will be a period of rest by the volcanoes and then they will erupt again. And so, we just have to be ready for the next eruption. And, and with the technology that is in place now, with the instrumentation, we will be in a much better position, be able to monitor and prepare for the, the next eruption there.